إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله سبحانه من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اللهم لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما تحب يا ربنا وترضى لك الحمد ملا السماوات وملا الأرض وما بينهما وملا ما شئت من شيء بعد لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أهل الثناء والمجد أحق ما قال العبد وكلنا لك عبد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا ومعلمنا وأسوتنا وقائدنا وحبيبنا محمد رسول الله اللهم صلِّ وسلِّم وبارِك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه حق قدره ومقداره العظيم نشهد يا سيدي يا رسول الله أنك بلغت الرسالة وأديت الأمانة ونصحت للأمة وكشف الله بك الغمة ومحى الله بك الظلمة وجاهدت في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاك اليقين اللهم اجزه عنا خير ما جزيت نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته وارض اللهم عن سادتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة أجمعين وارض اللهم عنا معهم أجمعين أما بعد Brothers and sisters Today we have few stories and the heroes of the stories are abnormal creatures. They are not like leaders we read in the books of history. They did not go fighting or be like generals or army leaders or whatever, but they are something specific. And the role they played has been mentioned more than one 1,400 years, their names, the role they played will continue being mentioned until the last minute of this life. They were positive. They did not say, it's not my business. It's not my issue. Oh, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing my job, that's all. I don't care about others. Or as they say it in French language, après moi la deluge. It's just me, and I don't care about the others. No. They cared for their nation. They cared for their community. They were positive. The first hero, the first champion, is something very tiny. Sometimes in order to see it, you have to go down. If you are up, you can crush it with your leg. It's the ant. Yeah, the ant. The ant is a leader. The ant is a hero. The ant is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored. And because of being positive, because of the role the ant played, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a complete surah called An-Nam, or the chapter of the ants. What this little creature has done, and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should talk about her, and why the Quran dedicates a big part of its verses to the story of that ant. One day, that ant was like any other ant. She had the job of working as monitoring the activities and things around her. And she could notice from far away there is an army. That army is not a normal army. It has the most sophisticated weapons that you could hear about. The army is composed of jinn. It's composed of animals, wild animals like wa uh, lions and so on, and soldiers with their all weapons, armors, and all these things. And she felt that her community, her village, her nation, definitely is going to be crushed. No way. She sacrificed her life. She didn't say putting hands like this and oh, what should I do? This is the army of Sulaiman, alayhi salam. About him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
قال رب هب لي ملكا لا ينبغي لأحد من بعدي He said, oh Allah, give me a kingdom that will never be given to anybody else after me. The aunt is watching all these things. She was courageous, brave. She did not get back and said, I'm going to do nothing. What should I do in front of this huge army? What should I do in front of Sulaiman alayhi salam? What should I do? What? No. She said, I have to be positive and I might change the situation. I might save my nation. And she started going here and there and up and down. And she started warning people as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story on the tongue of the ant. قالت نملة يا أيها النمل دخلوا مساكنكم لا يحضمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون She gave a warning Syrians Come on, all of you Go to your villages Go to your holes Go to your places Otherwise you will be crushed by Sulaiman عليه السلام and his soldiers And they will not realize that they crushed us Because we are very tiny Sayyidina Sulaiman salam, out of the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to him, فتبسم, he smiled and he gave an order to the army that sh they should change their route. They should choose another direction so the ants or the ant villages will be saved by an action of one, a member of this community, by an action, by being positive. Subhanallah, she sacrificed her life. She could be killed. She could die. She could lose everything. She didn't care about all these things. She cared just about the community. She just cared about the nation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed this act done by this aunt. And her name is being mentioned until the day of judgment. Another hero, a little bit bigger than the aunt. It's not too big actually. And that hero again challenged. I don't know. Subhanallah, Sayyidina Sulaiman, he was very patient with these creatures. And this bird challenged Sulaiman. The bird was like one of the soldiers, but he was given a high job, like working as a monitor, as nowadays we can say, commander in chief. Other animals, they have taken their command from the hoopoe through Sayyidina Sulaiman. See, oh, he was the messenger. Of Sayyidina Sulaiman salam. If he has a message, the hope was like an ambassador. He has to tell this, do this, do that. One day, it came to the knowledge of that hoopoe that far away there is another nation in other country. They are not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the hoopoe got upset. Is there anybody? On this planet who is not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to be positive and I have to take an action. He could say, oh, alhamdulillah, I'm having my job. I can sign in and sign out and that's all. And I have my position within the group of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Why should I travel? Why should I go far away? Why? The hoopoe didn't say that. But other people, they were negative or they didn't do the same thing like the hoopoe did. He said, I have to investigate. And the hoopoe take, took the initiative. You know the distance Sayyidina Sulaiman was in Palestine. And the people who are worshipping the sun, they are in Yemen, in an area called Saba. The distance between the two countries is more than 2,000 miles. Some people now, if you go say to them, brother, a brother there, he's in need for your help. He said, oh, you know, how long does it take? He will say 30 minutes. Oh, come on, 30 minutes. I am, should travel for 30 minutes. He's driving. He's losing nothing. Maybe just maybe a gallon of gas or whatever. He said, no, I'm not going. It's, I'm going to waste my time. I am tired. I am, I am. But look at the hoopoe. It didn't say that. He said, I'm going to investigate. And I would love to know. How dare these people are? How they worship another one beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He went there and he came back. Sayyidina Sulaiman, of course, he is checking his soldiers and he found out that the hope was absent. 
He said, how this hoopoe could go away without telling me, without informing me, I should punish the hoopoe. Then the hoopoe, when you are doing something positive, it's in the right way, you have to be courageous. The hoopoe did not get scared and said, oh, how, what should I say to Suleiman? He's the prophet. He's the one who was given this vast kingdom. I am in a very weak, bad situation. No, he didn't say that. He went to Suleiman, subhanAllah, in a very challenging language, in a very challenging way. He said to Suleiman, I got some knowledge that you yourself you do not have. And I came to you with the fact, I came to you with very important news. So Sayyidina Sulaiman, he said, come on, tell me what you found there. He believed because Sayyidina Sulaiman, he knows his soldiers very well. And when he chose the hoopoe, he chose the best ambassador. He said to him, tell me what you found there. He said, I found those people, they are not prostrating for Allah. The hoopoe, the bird, the creature that doesn't have intellect, that doesn't have reasoning, knows very well that Allah should be worshipped, that Allah is the creator. Prostration should only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until now, some people, they say, where is Allah? I can't see him. How can I worship a God that I don't see? No, you know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created everybody, he provided us with the tools by which we can recognize, we can realize that he is the creator, that he is the designer, that he is al-khaliq, al-bari, al-musawwir, and so on. So Sayyidina Sulaiman, he gave a little message to the hoopoe and said to him, go and give them this message. So the hoopoe, that this again, the hoopoe covered the whole distance I was just this morning checking how far to go two times from Jerusalem to Palestine and vice versa, sorry, from Jerusalem to Yemen, it's more than 5,000 miles. That hoopoe did this positive role, traveled, flew from one place to another, he could lose his life again, maybe the weather changes, maybe, maybe, maybe. He didn't care about all these things. He cared about his role. He cared about being positive. He cared about doing something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the scholars, he wrote a book about that. And when the mission was finished, the hope he said to Sayyidina Sulaiman, give me something specific, like a medal or a title or a rank. He said, all people say you are the hope of Sulaiman. What else? This is the, he said, that's a great honor, but I would love my name to be mentioned in the future. Sayyidina Sulaiman, he said, oh, do you have that type of arrogance? You think that you are something? The hope said, no, I am a soldier of you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I want the people to know that a little creature like me was the reason behind the guidance of a complete nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used me as a tool by which other nation was guided. Every person, I don't know where is Sabah now or which area is now exactly, but every Muslim there, he owes a lot to that little creature, to the hoopoe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him. And again, it was sent by Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam. You might do something positive, it might be something little, but in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is great. Another example, now we turn to human beings, leave the animal world, the, the Quran is full of great examples. In one of the Muslim countries, a young man, one of the colleges, he didn't find a place to pray. And he asked, it's the time for Dhuhr now, where should I pray? They told him, go to the basement, and there is a person there, one of the workers who's cleaning crew, he's, playing, he's praying sorry, there. He went, and he found the area is not a proper place. It's a dark, very small corner. He said, okay, I'm going to be positive. 
and I will never accept the situation. I have to do something. He went in the front of the college and he is starting Allahu Akbar. He made the adhan. And some people started mocking him and laughing at him. Is he crazy? What he is doing? He started praying alone the first day. The second day he was followed by the guy who was working, who was cleaning and praying in the basement. He was followed by another. The third day they were, were followed by a third person. The fourth, the fifth, the sixth. After a while, there was about 10 to 15 people praying. And the dean of the college, he saw those people and he said, okay, now let us have a musalla, a praying area for those people. And the musalla became bigger. Other colleges, they felt jealous. They said, why the College of Agriculture have their own praying area, have their own mosque, have their own musallam we don't have. Other colleges started doing the same thing. Hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of people started praying because of one single person. This one who prayed, who made that them for the first time. Everybody who will pray, later on he will be rewarded. The guy who prays will be rewarded and the one who was positive. As the hadith says, من سن سنة حسنة فله أجرها وأجر من عمل بها إلى يوم القيامة. The one who is doing a, a good act, like encouraging people, like telling people about goodness, teaching people, he will be rewarded. If you teach your son, if you were positive, you are not keeping silent. Some people say, oh, what should I do? My son, he grew up. And he can't say Al-Fatiha, for example. No, be positive. Alhamdulillah, there are so many applications now. So many tools, so many ways by which you can teach him or teach her. Be positive. And don't say, oh, I can't do it. You can do it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam, he said in the hadith, إِذَا قَامَتِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَفِي يَدِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَسِيلَةِ فَإِنِ اسْتَضَاعَ أَنْ يَغْرِسْهَا فَلْيَفْعَلْ Imagine, the day of judgment is taking place. Mountains, towers, skyscrapers are falling apart. Seas coming together. A huge mess in the universe. But you have a small tree, you plant it. Be, pos be positive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepted and He blessed a little act someone did. As the hadith of the Prophet, he says, رأيت رجلا يتقلب في الجنة معنى الحديث قد أزاح شجرة كانت تؤذي الناس أو كانت تؤذين في طريقهم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He accepted, He blessed the deed of a person. He saw something, a piece of a tree or a sharp object or something on the road that might obstruct people, that might stop people. It's like a hurdle in the middle of the road. So that person, he moved it little bit. It is something little, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted this deed and the person was forgiven. The Quran is full of examples. All of us, we know very well these stories. It was a king. Today, inshallah, let us just to remind myself and you. And the king, he tried to check how many people are positive in his area. He bought a huge rock in the entrance of the city or the village. Many people, everybody would look, oh, what should I do? Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. But someone said, no, I'm going to be positive. And I'll try to move this, look, this rock a little bit as it obstructs the way. People find difficulty to go. I have to remove it. Push it a little bit so I can make way for others. So the man, he did his best. He used his muscles and he pushed the rock. The surprise that the king, he put a small bag of gold under this rock. So the man was rewarded because of doing that, because of being positive. Sometimes we are not. Sometimes everybody just cares about himself. About I am okay, my family are okay, everything is okay. I have my salary, money, bank account, cars. Oh, I shouldn't know. We have to have our own role. I usually say that 
great. You are doing the ibadat. You are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is a supreme purpose behind our creation. This purpose is what have you done for your community? What have you done for your religion? What have you done for your nation? Your acts of worship is something for you. But the ummah should be benefited from you. Islam should be benefited from you. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم. الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. During the time of سيدنا موسى عليه السلام فرعون and his entourage, his soldiers, they decided to kill Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. But there was a person. He is a sincere person. He was positive. He did not get scared because of Fir'aun, of weapons, soldiers, because, because he said, no, I have to do something. And I have to save the life of Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran didn't mention the name of this person, but the Quran talked about the act. It's not necessarily that your name will be mentioned. They say Ahmad, Ali, Ibrahim, Mahmoud, whatever. They will say a person, a man, a brother did this and that. The Quran says, وَجَاءَ وَجَاءَ رَجْلٌ مِّنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا مُوسَى إِنَّ الْمَلَى يَأْتَمِرُونَ بِكَ لِيَقْتُلُكَ فَاخْرُجْ إِنِّي لَكَ مِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ A man came from far away. He might have traveled. He might be from another city. He doesn't have car. He doesn't have anything. He walked. Once he heard, people are conspiring against Musa alayhi salam. He said, I have to do my best to try to save the life of Kalimullah Musa alayhi salam. He said to Sayyidina Musa, Fakhruj, leave. Inni laka min nasiheen So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Fakharaja minha. He left the area and he went to another place. And he alayhi salam, he was saved by a person who was positive, a person who did something. Sometimes we have few activities, we have so on. So you find a lot, little people show interest. A few days ago, I posted something seeking the support of some people. Yani the number I was hoping that we should receive a huge number who are going to be positive, who are going to do services for the community. Wallahi, it is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one could work for an hour, a year. Make it for Allah. The guy, the person, the man who came to warn Musa, he could lose his life. But he said, I'm going to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always be positive and do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, they have the calculator. Oh, you know, an hour, if I work there, it will give me, it will give me. Make it for Allah. Make this hour for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave you 24 hours. Use the 23. Get job, make money, do whatever you do. And live just one, a month, a year, every two years. Do something little so it could be added to your good deeds. Nobody knows which deed will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أسأل الله عز وجل أن يتقبل مني ومنكم صالح الأعمال اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعدي تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا يا ربنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا اللهم اجعلنا متحابين في جلالك اللهم أزل عن قلوبنا الحقد والغل والحسد يا رب العالمين كما نسألك يا ربنا أن توفق أبناءنا وبناتنا طلاب العلم اللهم اجعلهم من العلماء العاملين واكتب لهم النجاح يا أرحم الراحمين وارزقهم البطانة الصالحة وأبعد عنهم رفقة السوء يا أرحم الراحمين كما نسألك يا ربنا في هذا اليوم العظيم ألا تدع لنا يا ربنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا محتاجا إلا أعطيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا مكروبا إلا فرجت كربه اللهم فرج كرب إخواننا وأخواتنا في سوريا وفي العراق وفي فلسطين وفي اليمن وفي كشمير وفي ميانمار وفوق كل أرض وتحت كل سماء يا رب العالمين اللهم أمنا في أوطاننا وأمنا في بيوتنا وأمنا في أعمالنا واحفظ أولادنا وبناتنا اللهم استر 
عوراتنا وأمن روعاتنا وارزقنا عملا صالحا ترضاه يا أرحم الراحمين كما نسألك يا ربنا في هذا اليوم العظيم أن ترحم أمواتنا وأموات المسلمين اللهم اغفر لآبائنا وأمهاتنا وبارك في الأحياء منهم يا رب العالمين اللهم إن نسألك أن تتوفنا وأن تراد عنا كل الرضا اللهم ارزقنا يا ربنا قبل الموت توبة وعند الموت شهادة وبعد الموت جنة ونعيمة اللهم لا تفضحنا بين خلقك ولا بين يديك We ask you Allah in this time that could be the time to respond to our calls and our prayers, our dua. We ask you to ease the hardships of our brothers and sisters in Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Palestine, Kashmir, Burma, and every part in the world. We ask you in this day to give complete and full success to all our kids and our youth in their schools, academies, universities, colleges. We ask you to bless our wealth, bless our health, bless our sons and daughters and wives. And we ask you to guide us to the right path. Nobody can guide except you. We ask you to accept all of our deeds. We ask you to give us sincerity for everything we do and make it mainly for Allah, for you. Oh Allah, give us the halal rizq and make a huge distance between us and the haram. اللهم آمين أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمن كتابا موقوتا أقم الصلاة الله أكبر.